I know you're gonna dig this. Ladies and gentlemen, and once again, welcome to the Funk Chronicles. I'm your host, Dr. Turk Logan, from Logan Communication and the Funk Music Hall of Fame and Exhibition Center. With me today, I'm very, very honored to have, we're going to confunctionize you. We have Mr. <laughs> Felton Pallet. How you doing, bro? I'm, I'm so blessed. How about you, man? Good, good, good. I'm sitting here looking at the new album, and... You know, my, my radio career started in 1971, so you know we played uh, <laughs> Confunctionize You and, and, and all of Confunction's music because it just fit right into the format. And I'm just so glad okay. to be able to talk to you because, you know, 40 years ago we had hair on our head and didn't have it under our chin. So, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so you can remember those days. Tell me I about uh, some of the members in the group today. Okay, um, we still have three original members, you know, currently playing with, with Kim Function. Um, there's Michael Cooper, the other lead singer in the group, and uh, Carl Fuller, uh, our original trumpet player, and, uh, and, and, and myself. Um, w when we put the uh, group back together in 93, for a while we had Paul Maceo Horrell with us on saxophone. Um, Danny Thomas is still playing keyboards and doing production work in uh, Vallejo. Haven't been in touch with Cedric for a while, so I have, I have no idea. But, but last I heard, he's doing well. Well, you know, it's so good because we just had uh, Lester uh, Trotman and Terry Zapp Trotman on. And, of course, they're being from Dayton, Ohio. We've had a, a major history with them. But what's so good about it is they're still performing. They're in the studio. Confunction still performing, still in the studio. You stood the test of yeah. time. You got a new CD out, man. I'm just so happy for you yeah. guys, and I hope it does well. Thank Let's you. talk about the new CD. Okay. Tell me about uh, it. I, well, got, I, I got it right here. Okay. Uh, so Michael actually had a had a head start working on it, um, uh, so he he had, he had actually started on it uh, about three years ago. Okay. And then he contacted me and said, "Hey, man, I've already started on this project." You know, we need uh, to to, uh, to 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 do some songs for for a new CD, right? Right. Uh, we did. We didn't have a record company, so it, it was a matter of we just did it just because we could. Right. And actually, because we should. You know, yeah, we're still here. We're still doing it. You know. And what was really cool about this the particular project is that the way that we can get stuff done now, right? Back quote back in the day, it was a case that we got had to get everyone together sit in the studio and I think the first day was spent getting drum sounds or you know, whatever and everyone had to be in the studio at pretty much the same time you know we cut the you know uh, with everybody at the same time and you know we'd be spending you know huge huge amounts of money in the studio uh, nowadays with today's technology man you know Mike would sit at home and record some parts email me what he did hey felt need you to add some background vocals and I'd Go into my studio, I'd do it, email it back to him. I'd say probably about two thirds of this album were done just like that. Well, you know, you know the difference, the difference uh, between now and then, somebody else put all that money up, a <laughs> record label, and now you have to go <laughs> in your pocket and spend thousands of dollars. Hopefully, you'll be able yeah. to recruit that, recruit that. So you have to believe in your project even more so than you did when you have somebody else was spending that money. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And, 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 and we had a lot, a lot of faith in this, you know. Um, right. And plus, we had uh, some wonderful studio musicians playing along with us. As a matter of fact, Tony, Tony, Tony is actually featured on one of the songs. Okay. The credits okay. got, got left off of... Uh, Somehow left off the album credits, but the song uh, "Once I Get In It" is actually actually should say featuring Tony, Tony, Tony. Okay. Um, okay. Let's talk a little bit about Confunction's history, because you guys such okay. a, have such a great history. Where did the name Confunction come from? Hmm. 
before I joined the group, uh, Project Soul, as, as, as they were called, had did a, a concert with uh, New Birth. Do you remember uh, New oh, Birth? Oh, yeah. Seems like a long New time, Birth. yeah. New Birth had a, bad, had, had a backup band uh, that were called the uh, Nightlighters, who later went on and had a solo success with KG. Remember that song? So anyway, uh, according to Michael, they were sitting out. Uh, they were playing. They were staying at the same hotel, and the Nightlighters were sitting out the out, out of the pool playing a song that they wrote, and they and so they were practicing it, and the name of that song was called Kun Funk Shun. Okay. So later, when we were uh, about to sign a recording contract in Memphis, Tennessee, the record company was concerned about the word soul. They said, you know. You know the corporate decision of well, we think the word soul is too confining, and you guys need to change your name. Um, after you know weeks of fighting and arguing, the word confunction was the only thing that we could agree on. And so you know they were concerned about the word soul, but seemed to be okay with the word funk. Go figure. Well, you know <laughs> that that brings up a good point because we went through the same. Uh, pullback in the early 70s with the word funk because it they thought it was so close to the other word and we right. we, we we wrestled with management and you know of course you know their ears were not, they didn't have the ears that those of us in radio did so whenever we say we're gonna funk you up in you they thought they heard the other word and so, right, right. <laughs> you know, I used to get called on the carpet on a regular basis until they got used to it. And it took them quite a few years. It took them like four or five years to get used to the word uh, funk because then, you know, a guy by the name of James Brown had a big song called Make It Funky, <laughs> you know. Right, right. And so yeah. it, it kind of kept, kind of caught on. And, and it, it's just a, you went through the same thing with the word soul because they thought that you might be typecast in a certain genre and they, you know, and, and, and I'll tell you, man, it, it's, 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 it's the political changes with record labels that a lot of us have to go through because they just don't have the ears that we have. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, interesting story about that when we were with Polygram. Uh, they called us, the, when we had the, 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 the To The Max LP out, right? I said, well, we're about to put out a single. Uh, what do you guys think it should be? Uh, should be? Should it be Miss Got the Body or should it be Love Train? And we're like, oh, Love Train. Then fine, Miss Got the Body it is. Well, I tell you, <laughs> when, 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 when you guys did Love Train, I mean, mm -hmm. I just fell in love with that song because you, you um, had so many slamming hits like Chase Me and, you know, high-powered impact hits. And then you came out with this ballad, which gave a whole different side to you guys, man. And you're like, dang, they can sing this ballad? And it was just, and I, I own a radio station, uh, internet radio station, and I, pl I still play Confunctions music on a daily basis to all my 40,000 listeners out there. So you still uh, got a supporter after all these years. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, yep. uh, I, I, actually, before Love Train, we, we had uh, a, a couple of ballads. Uh, uh, there was, uh, yeah, Let Me Put Love in Your Mind from, from the, um, from the uh, Candy LP. Right. Uh, by your, you know, uh, we did uh, By Your Side on the Spirit of Love LP. I remember that. I love and, that, too. And uh, I, I, I'll Set You Out Okay, which is from, from the Secrets LP. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, uh, the other ones yeah, came later, you know, such as Baby I'm Hooked. As, as a matter of fact, Polygram went back and they put out a, a cd of nothing but ballads nothing but most but our popular ballads i mean and there was a whole cd well, a whole cd it, it's it's good that uh, you're releasing new product after all these years out there what's the plan is is this out already or is this coming out or what's the plan for this new cd uh, the new CD came out about four weeks ago, debuted at number 54 on the Billboard R&B charts a week ago. So uh, we're very, very excited about it. Very excited. Good, because then, yeah. you know, one of the things that happens to a group, when you have product out, you get tour support from, in some cases, it's the record label, but you guys are the record co companies now, and so it's nice to play your music that you did 20, 30, 
years ago, but it's also nice to say we got something new that you can pick up also. So you can sell the CDs right there at the venues, right? That's true. Yeah, yeah, we, we can. It's, uh, but it's also available on uh, on like iTunes, Amazon, Amazon, and I think you can get it at Best Buy. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's, it's, well, see, that's it's, a good thing. Available. And so when, you, yeah. when you're doing your own marketing and you're out there, you know, with the other groups that you got product out there and, you know, you got new product out there, and I wish you all the luck and all the success. What Thank was you. some of your memorable experiences out there on the road? Ooh. We, oh, oh, okay. The biggest immediate one that comes to mind was the summer of 1972. Okay. This is when, when, when we were still Project Soul and probably uh, the, the singularly most important event that got us to where we are today, right? We had did a, um, we were called to be the backup band for the Soul Children when they were visiting yeah, the, uh, the Stax recording group, the Soul Children. Right. They were visiting the Bay Area and they needed a backup band, so they used Project Soul, right? Us. Okay. My, uh, I, I was playing in another band, but Michael called me in to just to play extra and play trumpet, right? Okay. And so um, a year later, when they came back, the summer of 72, Michael and I went to their concert uh, over and over, over, over with uh, Norman West, the lead, the lead, lead uh, singer of the group. And after the show, he's like, oh, oh, what, what, what are you guys doing now? And one of us said, oh, well, we're just hanging out, just waiting to be your backup band. And he went, oh. And he fired his backup band and hired us. Okay. Two, week, two weeks later, we're getting packed up from living with our parents and, <laughs> you know, and we're packing up and we're moving from Vallejo, California to Memphis, Tennessee, to go out on the road to be the back up band for the soul. Now that, now that was August fourth. What was that experience like? Uh, well, that since we had never been out of the Bay Area other than a couple of trips down to, to L.A., it, it, it was exciting. But 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 the big thing is what happened on the twenty second. Okay. So we're just talking uh, two weeks later, right? We're playing in front of 104,000 people at the LA Coliseum. Please, the Barquets, uh, the emotions, uh, Johnny Taylor for the Watch Stacks Festival, okay. and Rufus Thomas. That that was probably, you know, a, a whole thing with the Soul Children moving us to Memphis is what triggered us getting the record deal with the record company in Memphis, which triggered the getting the deal with Mercury Records up in Chicago. And you see what I mean? So it started a chain of events that led us to it to where we are today. Well, you know, um, that that experience being on stage in front of those thousands of people, I mean, it had to be an awesome experience for, for a young band. Uh, but we were too scared to make a mistake. That, oh, that's right, because they were filming not only the concert, but they were filming a live record and making a movie at the same time. You know, so yeah, the, the, yeah, you you can find the movie now. Um, you know, it's, it's called it's called Watch Stacks because you know uh, every year, uh, Los Angeles does the uh, the Watch Music Festival. Right. And that particular year, Stax Records got with them saying, "Well, you know what? Why don't you let us provide the music in exchange for the rights to to do this movie?" And they and they call it Watch Stacks. You know, that high, highly significant significant well, you know, concert. You know, when you when when in in that era, when you are performing and then you get the opportunity to do a movie and do the music for a movie uh, that, that's got to be that's got to be a nice trip to experience oh yeah oh yeah yeah I, I mean to go from being a top 40 band just three weeks earlier man it's it's it's, it's huge yeah uh, yeah it's like it's like here uh it's fresh out of high school hi we're now gonna uh, bring you into uh come be an astronaut <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, three weeks to learn what you need to do. In your <laughs> early days of musicianship, what were some of the drawbacks that you experienced before you? I mean, sometimes I, I remember uh, when I was a little guy, I wanted to do this, and I would tell my mother and my grandparents, well, you know, this is what I think I want to do. And they're like, yeah, right. You know, you want to be a radio announcer. You can't hardly even talk, <laughs> you know. So 
What, what were some of the experiences in growing up before you became the musician that you are today? Man, you know what? I'm, I, I have to be honest with you. I had no negative things happen. Okay. My, my mother, my mother, um, my mother was a, a musician. Okay. She made, she made you the music. Uh, and so she was totally supportive. I mean, she, 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 she got me uh, trumpet lessons, uh, piano lessons. I mean, uh, uh, voice lessons. I mean, she was totally, totally supportive in what I wanted to do with music. H however, I do need to tell you that even today, years later, she's still hoping that I get a real job. <laughs> she well, still wants to make it a real, a, quote, a real job, but but no, she's <laughs> totally totally supportive. Uh, and even when I wanted to switch to playing guitar, she she's like, "Well, I'm I'm, I'm not going to pay for lessons." I'm like, "Not a problem." So I taught myself guitar and you know, and and trombone. Oh, oh, but, but well, mom, I I need to join this other band here. Uh, they already have a trumpet player. They already have a, already have a guitar player, keyboard player. I need a trombone. So I can play with the other group. She said, "Fine." Uh, good luck on that. Well, <laughs> I'm not going to hold you back. You brought up a real Go good point. You said your mother majored in music. So, so that yes. meant she went to school. And yes. those of us here at the Funk Music Hall of Fame and Exhibition Center, we have an educational piece for our young people to learn some of the things you learned at an early age. How important right. is education tied into the music business? Oh, yeah. First of all, I need to say that it is called the music business for a reason. <laughs> okay, it is yeah. called the music business for a reason. Uh, to be educated on, on, on that part, because you know w what we do, I would say, is pretty much equal parts music and and and, and business. Right. And I and I'm being I'm being totally serious about that. Uh, so I can see it as a uh, serious advantage you know, to get some education in, in, in business management, you know. Well, you, hit the, uh, you hit the nail on the head because I, being around for a, f a few years, I've seen so many groups get tied up in the record company contracts and can't move forward because they didn't read the contract or understand the contract when they sign the contract on the front end and then all of a mm -hmm. sudden they can't do anything until the contract expires and it's self-renewed for another five years and when that five years comes up the group's not the same anymore so it, I, I think it's important because like you said and both of us agree on it's called show business that our Hello? young people the young people understand the business part of show oh yeah I've, I've a absolutely, you know it's uh, and 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 there have been probably several examples that you can probably think of where it was where even the business totally overshadowed the talent of the artist. You know that, that you 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 look back and you see someone and it's like, dang, how'd they get a record deal? You know, <laughs> and you but you know they've got this huge money machine. Uh, going on behind them and, and promotion and stuff like that. I mean, there's, there's like several elements in, 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 in getting a um, a hit record, you know, uh, and, and, and the promotion of the record probably being the number one factor. Well, we just the, finished the talking to two of your colleagues in the music business, Lester Trotman and his brother, um, Zap Trotman, Terry Trotman, mm -hmm. and they've been in the music right. business as long as uh, can function. But what was impressive to me in talking to them just a few minutes ago was Zap's son. This young mm -hmm. man, probably in his late 20s, was so impressive when he started talking about the record business that I was just kind of blown away because he knows record company contracts and he books his groups and he know and 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 he knows about uh, the, the, the amount of money that the group is supposed to be getting and how they should get there and, and things of this nature. And I've always told the Trotmans I had so much respect for them because they were a self-contained family, mm -hmm. uh, up right. until, you know, even though we lost Roger and Larry, but they're still continuing today. And I think that's very important message that we get across to our youngsters. If you're going to be in this business, understand the business of music. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely.
you know, it's 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 way more than just getting on stage and 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 just playing. I mean, I you know, for me, that's still the remaining fun part. That that hour and a half that I spent on stage, you know, thinking about that's that's still the fun part. And then that's that's and actually the only reason why I'm still, <laughs> why I still do this, I, I value I value the fun, you know. But it's it's it's, it's been an interesting education because you know actually our lack of knowledge of the music business, I'm gonna say helped. But that's what got us into trouble in our first contract that we signed. Right. But the fact that we got into the trouble, again, uh, I talk about a chain of events, us getting into that trouble started that chain of events that got us to where we are here. So, you know, we had a very painful, but experience, you know, a painful, expensive lesson. Well, yeah, and they usually are. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the Funk Chronicles with your host, Dr. Turk Logan and Felton palette with confunction you're going to be appearing in denver colorado coming up soon and performing some of the great hits and maybe some of the new hits tell us how you're preparing to get ready for that big concert coming up oh man we we actually have a a a, a new rehearsal coming up on the hold on 24th 25th and 26th we're gonna lock ourselves away pretty much reinvent ourselves for those three, <laughs> three for those three days in pre preparation, we're adding uh, at least three new songs to the show. Okay. And, you know, reconfiguring some other stuff. You know, we're already doing um, uh, Your Night from the new album. Okay. Uh, we've got to do, uh, got to do uh, I Miss You, and we're either going to, no, we're going to add Taboo, probably add Taboo, and uh, one other song. We haven't figured out what it is yet. Well, but you we're, know, we're really excited. Go ahead. In talking to David Webb, who's the president and CEO of the, the funk music uh, um Hall of Fame and Exhibition Center. I know. I know he's involved in the planning of this of this concert, and it's nice. Even from my perspective, I was just talking to uh, Tom Shelby of Lakeside, and Tom Shelby right. and I went to grade school together. So we got we <laughs> we had history when we were talking about history 50 years ago. But right. it's always nice to be in a crowd on audience and here's some of the old favorite tunes that you've been used to hearing on the radio. I totally agree. And since and since we were just talking about Lakeside for a second, I'm always I'm I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm 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 a Lakeside fan. Anytime we're on the same show and they're on stage, I'm in the audience watching. I'm uh, yep. <laughs> I still enjoy watching them. Well that, that that energy came out of Dayton, Ohio and, and, and many other groups that that came from oh, Dayton, yeah. Ohio, Zap, Lakeside, Heat Wave, Sun, Dayton, the Ohio Players, and the list goes on yeah. and on and on. We're just proud to have been able to be a part of that history. Felton, it's been right. a, a, an honor and a pleasure talking to you here on the Funk Chronicles, and uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to fly out there to Denver to be one of those fans in the stands to see you perform. All right. Lots of luck, God bless, and, and keep on doing, keep on funking on. <laughs> Thanks, man. You too. Hey, man. And let's do this again. Let's do this again. All right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us. I'm Dr. Turk Logan from Logan Communication and the Funk Music Hall of Fame and Exhibition Center. Glad to see you, and we'll see you next time. Wow.